So then let's get started to this uh, OpenEdX uh, meetup featuring a national e-learning initiative in Ukraine with Sergei Movkan, CEO of Raccoon Gang. And I'm Stefania Trabucchi from Abstract Technology, and I'm really very, very, very glad to be the presenter today for this event. So I try to talk about a, a short story about Ukraine and my relationship. Okay. That's why I asked for uh, uh, to be the presenter today, because my relationship with Ukraine and the educational field goes back about 20 years and my relation my first relationship is very personal it was with a doctor who moved to italy many years ago to be able to work and allow her family and children in ukraine to study so i think ukraine's invest a lot in good education and are sometimes ahead of western country more than half of Anna Celery, my friend Anna, has always gone to Ukraine to her family, enable her two sons to become doctors and engineer in Kiev. Anna has always been a great friend and a strong Ukrainian woman. It's very personal, I know, but I have the second relationship. I met the Ukraine service provider Rakungen with Sergey and the team at the Open Edits Conference 2016. So uh, six years ago in the Stanford in the US, Stanford and University in the Open Edix conference. And Rakungen is a very great and professional group of people that I personally am always very close to. And finally, the last relationship, over 30 people from Kiev are at the moment working, are my husband colleagues who can now continue to work normally despite the current situation. So, I know is, uh, is something that everybody knows, but the war in Ukraine, Russia attacks on an independent, modern, a technological country, on a country with an excellent, excellent education system, I know it, and supported by an ever-growing economy. For me, it was uh, as if uh, they would have attacked me. That's my interest today in a great part. Attack me, attack my company, my family and my friends. Uh, but today, yes, today I'm very proud because uh, to open this Open Edix community uh, event is uh, really dedicated to you, to Rakungen, and dedicated to Ukraine, giving space to Rakungen and to Sergei to talk about a project of particular importance for the world world of education. That's the message. And Sergei as founders of Raccoon Gang and Open Edix provider, as we are, will present a national Ukraine initiative in which the Open Edix platform is leveraged to provide students with digital education during time of war. So before giving to the word to Sergei, I will just uh, the last two seconds like to add why it's important now to reflect on and present this project. Ukraine plays a fundamental and vital role in the e-learning today because the culture and knowledge of young minds in the resistance to the brutal force of uh, oppressors. So how many school age children had to leave the country for safety? How many children want to continue learning and have a difficult starting point? Let's find out solution together today. So please, Sergey, your stage. Thank you, Stefania. <clears throat> so um, what uh, we will talk today about. So the initial idea was to um, provide some insights on how um, uh, open source and in general and open edX uh, specifically can help in like brutal times which means that it it could help also in like uh, any other times right so um, what else I go in to talk about so um, I'm going to uh, describe or to, to present uh, the VCO project, which is uh, all Ukrainian school online, Ukrainian Ministry of Education K K12 COVID response project. 
which is now uh, lives its second life during the war. Also, I will provide some insight on Zeno. Zeno is, um, so to say, an extension to Visio. Uh, this is a tool for external independent testing. It's, um, let's say, uh, jmat like uh, testing for those who uh, live in schools and are willing to um, file the admission to universities. Um, also, another government-related uh, project is ISPET. ISPET is um, it's an exam in Ukrainian, and this is a, a platform uh, to, uh, to, to, to take um, or to hold uh, government, um, government required exams for two types of the audience. One is for government officials, uh knowledge of ukrainian is required by law and the other uh, are those who are seeking uh, ukrainian citizenship um and the last but not least maybe some words about how is it to work with the government in general <clears throat> so let's start with some like introductions of our um governmental relations <laughs> of Rakun Genk and um, Ukraine. Um, we have been working with government-related entities since Revolution of Dignity in 2014. Um, Revolution of Dignity at that time r raised a need of uh, changes in all levels of, on all levels of Ukraine. And um, uh, IT specialists started to um, play some significant role in those, uh, let's say, reforms. Um, if we can say so, uh, many of processes in governments was uh, trans digitally transformed at that time. As an example, our specialists are responsible for Prozora. Prozora is one of the first and most famous Ukrainian digital anti-corruption projects. Uh, uh, Rakun Genk uh, is not alone. Many IT companies took their chances to contribute to improving democracy in Ukraine after the revolution. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> government didn't find funding for education till COVID-19. Actually, I wonder if there's any single government in the world which puts uh, education as a priority before the COVID. Um, all of us um, have seen those uh, memes about uh, reasons for digital transformations and uh, like among our CTO, our CEO and COVID-19. COVID-19 was the like primary reason for digital transformation for many companies and governments uh, had uh, or has a huge um, huge resistance to change thus some only like catastrophical or nearly catastrophical events actually push them uh, into that direction so with COVID-19 many governments including Ukrainian uh, paid significant attention to various COVID response projects this was when we started our close collaboration with the Ministry of Education and Science of Ukraine. So I will tell you about our three significant projects with the Ministry of Education and Science, and I will also provide some notes on how is it to work uh, with the uh, government in general. Um, so uh, all Ukrainian school online. Uh, this is one of the most important and most probably well-known of our projects for the Ministry of Education and Science. In general, uh, this is a COVID response project aimed to help teachers as a main target audience to switch to online learning and as a secondary target audience to help pupils and their parents to have the opportunity to continue education um, while being prevented from going to school, uh, like to real schools, not online schools. At that time, uh, most probably not only in Ukraine, but 
uh, pretty much everywhere in the world, online learning uh, meant to be just Zoom meetings or Skype meetings or Viber calls or something like that. Uh, it was not efficient and so on. Um, so we were approached by our Ministry of Education and um, we've negotiated a bit and come up with the project. As you might guess, the platform was built based on OpenEdX with some required customizations, which we tried to keep minimalistic. Uh, the customizations include custom registration to uh, support uh, regulations from the ministry, uh, course categories uh, to uh, allow teachers to easily navigate courses and subjects, and teachers' cabinet. So, um, registration was expanded with three new roles, uh, like with three roles and additional information, like game information, specific school, uh, specific class, and so on. Uh, this uh, information about users was uh, used by the ministry to collect analytics and, and market the platform. Uh, teacher's cabinet is a tool that enables uh, customization of courses and class management. Initially, uh, teachers were only able to get a copy of master course or if we, if we step back a bit so the platform uh, provides a library of courses uh, for all subjects uh, for grades from fifth to 11th we have 11th um, year <laughs> like k-12 so it's actually k-11 in um, uh, in ukraine um, so, uh, teachers initially were able um, only to get a copy of that master course, invite their specific class in that course, and manage uh, that uh, course as an instructor um, without the ability to modify the course. Uh, teachers had limited access to the studio only to configure schedule and the details. The idea was that with such a configuration, um, it will allow us to have easier cascade updates from the master courses. Uh, but the reality of usage uh, showed that the updates to master courses are not that frequent, while the demand for the ability to customize the course from teachers is high. Thus, teacher's cabinet tool was reworked to allow customizing the courses by teachers. And um, from one point of view, it uh, breaks the ability for updates from the master course. But as, I, but as I've mentioned, um, this appeared to be, I mean, this, those updatability, uh, it appeared to be a less desired feature compared to the ability to customize courses by teachers. As a quick note, Oh, maybe not so quick. Master courses are maintained by uh, uh, a third party group of instructional designers uh, using school materials. Um, in Ukraine, most of schools are government funded and teachers are mm, underpaid and in general are unmotivated to um, come up with some mm, new ways of teaching. On the other hand, we also have several organizations which unite motivated teachers. Most prominent organizations are at Camp, also known as the White Cross, and Asvitoria. It's something like Educatoria in Ukrainian. Among those organizations, uh, the online curriculum for the 5th to 11th grades emerged, and it was used as a base uh, for the content of all Ukrainian school online. Now, the development and maintenance of the content is a government-funded process right now, and these uh, motivated teachers who initially created this content for themselves, uh, those teachers are, um, had, has a, or have a great record of local success. So they, their students uh, normally get to universities, uh, gets like some prizes in um, uh, various Olymp... Uh, we had um, institution of Olympics, like in math or in chemistry or whatever. So those motivated teachers 
that previously had only local success are able to influence the whole country uh, via this platform. Um, oh, a few words on the implementation of, of, um, of the platform. Um, negotiation started um, on January 2012. Uh, it was when Ukraine actually started to think about COVID because before this, COVID was somewhere else. Um, at, but in 2012, it was uh, here already. Um, we were approached by means the Ministry of Education. Uh, we were discussing like the ways uh, how to create this uh, nationwide learning platform and so on and so on. Uh, but the idea was dismissed at that time due to the fear of providing like the unfair advantage to um, citizens of cities or to those with stable internet connections over those who doesn't have it. Besides that, uh, it was a period when we didn't have an appointed minister of education and only someone who was acting as a minister. And that someone chosen to be safe uh, than sorry and choose the path of tele lessons via national television. Uh, yeah, as for if if there are questions, I'll be answering soon. Um, nevertheless, after the appointment of the minister and the analysis of the situation, uh, with the so it was the end of the school year in spring, uh, some processes in summer, uh, and the ministry approached us uh, in August with the same request. When I say the same request, I mean that the scope and the deadline stayed the same. It was December. Uh, it's only the start date changed. Luckily, with open edX and some overtime, uh, the team managed to deploy an instance and complete all the customizations. Uh, the main challenge um, actually uh, was not the platform itself, because open edX in this regard provided us with a like um, robust set of tools which are uh, almost perfectly fit the requirements. The main challenge was uh, adding the content to the platform within uh, very tight deadlines. The ministry signed off the content only two or three weeks before the launch. Um, and we had as far as I recall, only two weeks to complete everything. Uh, by the way, on the Open edX Con 2022, guys from Polytechnic University of Valencia approached me and showed the Excel-based tool to create Open edX courseware. And it's a pity we had not that tool at that time. So we just brute forced the content with a strict process and hired manpower. Uh, the whole process was coordinated by our instructional design and content development department. Um, they were uh, providing technical assistance to the instructors. They were teaching um, content editors to actually put everything online. Uh, they were supporting uh, they were supporting let's say, early adopters, those who were trying to work on their own uh, while we were actually converting the content from uh, a set of Google documents and videos into the real uh, courseware. So um, that was the start of the project. Um, It started, it, it was officially launched in December 2012. Uh, it was uh, very much used during uh, the second semester of that school year. So uh, winter and spring of 20 uh, to 21. Uh, but by the end of um, 2021, uh, the COVID was almost not a scene in Ukraine. Uh, so the platform uh, was used, but only for by those who really adopted the, this blended style of learning. Unfortunately, most of the teachers switched back to offline classes as soon as they could. 
but as the war started, the ministry pinged us uh, to make sure that the platform is ready for the increased load and asked for one single addition, uh, allowing for the content to be consumed without registration. Um, the first week in war, it was kind of a chaos. We were relocating our personnel with their families to safer places. But on the second week, we completed this request and the platform was ready. It was uh, adver ad advertised via television and uh, ministry channels. So all school teachers were again reminded um, about about the platform and um, in March we had uh, 300,000 uh, active users and uh, as of now um, so till till May um, it showed uh, like 400,000 active users per week uh, now it's already the end of school year, so um, it's not that active yet. For some reason, it is still being used. So we have some activity. It's like far less than like four hundred thousand, uh, but from fifty thousand to one hundred thousand um, per week, we have some some users. Maybe uh, those are someone whose parents are asking them to to do some learning, or maybe some some classes um, continued their their school year. Sorry, sorry for interrupting. Yeah, there is sure. A question maybe we can try to answer immediately. The question is. Uh, for the teacher cabinet customization, did you, did your team leverage the CCX capability? No. Um, um, as far as I recall, CCX was not even a candidate for this because we were not pleased with uh, what it can do. Besides, uh, we knew that at some point we will be required to allow teachers to actually change the courseware. Thus, uh, we decided to go into that uh, copy model, so to say. And one question related to the numbers you are showing is quite important. Uh, a person in asking about how many school students there are in Ukraine in general, in total. Is there an estimation what per yeah, of it's, school it's, students it's, population um, was on the platform? Mm -hmm. yeah. as, far as, as far as I recall, uh, the numbers are for 2019. There was... Uh, uh, 6,500 something. Anyways, I don't recall the class structure and the school structures, but as for the pupils, we have uh, 6 million something pupils from 5th grade to 11th grade. So it's a bit less for 5th to 11th grade, which is um, covered by that broad platform. And we have uh, 3 million registrations in the platform till now. So we may assume that it's roughly 40 something percent, maybe less a bit if we assume that there are also duplicates. For example, if someone like lost their password, they registered with some other email or something like that. Uh, and this, uh, so what's important? Uh, the main idea of uh, the platform was to allow um, school teachers to have a robust set of school materials to, um, to, to teach online. They could use like handouts, video lectures and ads uh, and the rest during their um, synchronous sessions. Also, uh, they could use formative and summative assessments, but that was not a requirement. So only those who were willing to do so 
did so. And also, uh, as soon as the platform was um, advertised via DIA uh, application, uh, Ministry, of, uh, Ministry of Digitalization in Ukraine uh, have created, an, uh, again, nationwide application DIA, uh, which among everything allows you to have like digital documents, uh, digital um, TV, you can watch whatever national television via this application. And uh, the install base is, as far as I recall, roughly close to like either 12 or 20 millions, I don't recall. Thus, it was uh, advertised via uh, this application. Uh, this application was used by the active part of uh, Ukrainians. And this active part of Ukrainians most probably force their kids to use that platform too. Uh, uh, thus said, uh, 3 million uh, unique registration uh, is a huge number, uh, but uh, 4,000 active uh, users per week is a bit less. Yet is still um, so. If we assume that only these four thousand are who are actually using the platform, it's not a forty-five percent. It's uh, close to 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 whatever uh, eight or seven percent or something like that. So, Sergey, we, we have another question. Can we interrupt you or you want yeah, to go yeah, ahead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, okay. I am okay. Okay, I'm okay. We, we want to try to be on time. Uh, now we have uh, 50, uh, 55 minutes less to the end of the event, just to be sure that you have uh, a time also for your presentation. Um, to for, 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 yeah, for that, for that particular project, uh, I'm almost done. Uh, the rest will be not so specific. It was like uh, only um, an overview. Okay, let's go to the next question then, and then feel free to go ahead to some uh, details. Uh, that's great. So, um, a really nice project showing the power of tech, uh, uh, technology in extremely difficult situation. Congratulations. Uh, I'm also curious about what the business model behind the project with the COVID pay, uh, phase. Uh, was it based on number of students or on a service fee or any other approach? How have it involved for these even more stringent moments? Mm -hmm. um, uh, the simple answer is that this project is not a business project. This is... Um, a government project which is free to to use and for us it was just a like one time engagement we've completed the project get our payments um and also we are doing some support that's it uh there uh, there are various thoughts uh, about uh building some sort of an educational ecosystem around that project which will allow uh, market players to to emerge and so on as an example um, uh, that project will be um, integrated with um, how it's called Whatever, the, the project of, again, another project of Ministry of Education uh, about uh, uh, central registry of all school children and then kindergarten children and high uh, higher school children and so on. Uh, that would be like a central uh, exchange point of the ecosystem. Then we could connect uh, an LMS, or we could connect a, um, a no notebook services where teachers uh, could provide information to parents and so on. We could uh, connect some sort of whatever food provider, so parents could uh, buy food for their kids 
during some digital uh, marketplace um maybe electronic books marketplace or like uh, workbooks or um, other supplementary materials and so on so that said uh, that particular project is not a business project it's just a covid response project which was funded mostly by um, uh, unesco or united nations or something like that but as soon as it's now in a position of ministry of education and science uh, they are thinking on how to uh, create something bigger than that um, okay sergey maybe you can go ahead with your slide and then we will collect from now to then all the questions for the final uh, q a session so you are able to finish uh, your yeah. presentation go so, ahead. thank you um so what's next um current backlog uh, of the project consists of some pre-war requests uh, and some vague wartime additions so one of the uh, like most more, maybe interesting uh, is the studio simplification it's again a very vague term um it is required because we've opened the studio to regular teachers. When it was only, so to say, professionals working with the studio, uh, the studio was okay. By the, by the way, it's almost like the same with all of our projects. Everybody mourns about how difficult the studio is for the first couple of days, and then all of a sudden it becomes okay once you get accustomed with it. But here we have too much uh, of instructors to teach, so the ministry decided to go into simplification journey. The technical requirements um, for that is being created right now. So I don't know what's in there, but most probably I'll be able to share uh, it with the community later, as soon as we have it. Uh, the next request is a pull request feature. So it naturally comes with the ability to change the course by the individual teachers. As soon as you can change the courseware, you might want to suggest these changes to the master course. And this requires... Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, as soon as you change... Um... Oh, I am sorry. <laughs> My door is not that good to keep kids away. So what I was talking about, yeah, the pull request feature. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, as soon as teachers are changing their courseware, most probably this is done by some good reason. And those changes, uh, it's good to be able to, uh, to suggest it back to the master course. With this, uh, we will be able to update master courses more frequently and uh, like so to say, crowdsource them. This request was confirmed and funding was approved before war, but the war put it on pause. Um, hopefully we will complete it as soon as we can. Additional materials model for uh, juniors uh, is another pre-war request, uh, um, which was needed for grades from the first to the fourth. Uh, the main idea is that um, generic types of content like videos quizzes texts images whatever are not suitable for kids in their earliest so uh, again uh, this is in the ideation phase uh, teachers of uh, those first grades are um, trying to come up with uh, various activities and other interactive content uh, which is suitable for small pupils but are still available online and uh, integration with various tools from microsoft and google uh, 
Microsoft and Google, as soon as the war started, Microsoft and Google approached the Ministry of Education uh, and Science with the proposals of help. Uh, for example, Google has donated uh, 43,000 uh, Chromebooks to teachers, so they're able to use all Ukrainian school online and so on. Uh, Microsoft also uh, has donated some um, something uh, of their uh, like office tools and some hardware and, and also the idea is to somehow integrate all Ukrainian school online into Microsoft Teams. And we have ideas on how to do this uh, like both ways. It could be either Microsoft Teams could be integrated into all Ukrainian school online to support synchronous events, or all Ukrainian school online could be integrated into Microsoft Teams is a Teams app, uh, which is obviously more preferred way for Microsoft, but the ministry is still thinking on like what they want. Uh, by the way, uh, one uh, so Ukraine geographically is separated by so-called regions, and uh, we have one region uh, which runs a pilot uh, with uh, Microsoft technologies. So all educational institutions and uh, the educational processes is powered by Microsoft solutions, Microsoft Teams. Um, uh, Microsoft Office uh, and so on and so on. So maybe something interesting we will come up out of it. Um, so that's all for all Ukrainian school online. Yeah. Okay, Sergey. Hey, thank you very much for this uh, presentation. I think from the uh, users here we will have uh, uh, some question uh, let me check the last one so one question is um, how do you see learning developing uh, in the next five years yes. what are generation looking for um I am so maybe this is I am not the right person to answer this. Um, we only see what is required right now and uh, what we have in our backlog. Um, if we are talking about generations and so on, this is more like a philosophical question. We can come up with a whole bunch of uh, buzzwords like gamification, adaptive learning, blah, 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 and so on. Uh, but the thing is that it's not only about what generations are looking for, it's also about what the educational machine uh, in general is ready for. And unfortunately, it is ready for only some incremental changes which are um, hardly introduced and uh, very easily abandoned. So we have to be persistent in order to change like anything. So let's not think about generations. Let's just push for like smaller steps. Um, the next question was about uh, whether or not we will be using GitHub in our pull request tool for teachers. Most probably um, uh, it won't be based on GitHub. Uh, unless that GitHub will be completely hidden from the users. Uh, but we uh, very much uh, hope to use block store and the, and the capabilities which are opened by that technology. Okay, then we have a question about which X block are installed. That's a curious question, but very uh, good. Yep. Uh, so, as for the X blocks, so um, everything which is available out of the box, plus uh, SCORM X block, plus two X blocks which are developed um, by the request of, uh, let's say, Ukrainian regulations, because uh, we have some type of quizzes which are used in summative assessments in and in uh, those exams which are um, uh, required for university admissions. Those are um, 
like connect the dots, so to say, we have to uh, compare um, compare different terms or something like that. To some extent, it um, it is similar to drag and drop, uh, but slightly different interface. I will I I will not I I don't have screenshots on me right now, but I'll maybe send a bit later. Again, the community will see it. And the other one is just a simple uh, insert uh, a word into a sentence, which is uh, roughly based on uh, um, either text inputs or um, multiple, multiple choices. Uh, embedded into sentences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, then uh, did you face any disagreement issue that I suppose is typical for young learners? And uh, if you had interesting solution given your scale? So uh, it's disengagement. Uh, as soon as we are not uh, working with the end users, uh, we only have uh, like it through two layers of um, like feedback to feed to someone to someone to us thus uh, most probably we have those disen disengagement issues uh, most probably uh, yet uh, from um, uh, from the feedback we had uh, it's disengagement is far less significant compared to a like one hour uh, length lecture from the teacher in Skype or something. Uh, but I might expect that we only had a positive feedbacks from our <laughs> collaborators in the ministry and so on. Okay, thank you very much, Sergey. Another question we have, uh, did you experience uh, any significant blockers to content development and course authoring? Uh, no, and what's interesting, um, I am telling this to pretty much all of our customers on pre-sales and so on. When uh, teacher um, decision makers are asking us, like, which type of contents open edX supports and so on and so on, I am like telling that there are like tons of different types. But frankly speaking, your instructors will be using only a handful of those. Thus, uh, teachers tend to create uh, boring curriculums, boring storyboards. And we were, uh, ask, we were asking them to make it more interactive, uh, add more different types of quizzes, not only something choose from four variants or something. So uh, the main challenge is not in the fact that someone is willing to create something so interactive that open edX can handle it. The main challenge is to force instructors to use what's in there to make it more interactive rather than simple text and images. That said, uh, also, we have like, I'd say maybe two to 3% of teachers which are creating various ideas on like what they want in their particular subject and so on, which is obviously possible. Uh, but we are saying them that they might want to either um, learn some sort of like basics of JavaScript and use some predefined libraries or use H5P or learn basics of articulate to create those uh, interactives which are again for for a regular teacher who is using blackboard and uh, paper notebooks pretty much any interactivity is like super interactivity so uh, they are saying like so most of their request starts with most probably you won't be able to do this but i'd like to know if you can do that and that and that and in like 50% of cases, it's already there. You can just use open edX to, to come to cover those ideas. Uh, another maybe 
40% is something which is covered by either SCORMs, I articulate, captivate, uh, adapt, uh, learn or something, H5P, and 10% requires some um, uh, X-Block development or integrating some third party already existing tools, uh, which is not a case in Ukraine because um, most of them don't want to pay for those great tools. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, for example, um, I don't know whether it's well known or not, but there is a tool like GeoGebra. GeoGebra is a, um, an open source tool set for uh, uh, solving algebra and geometry equation, um, al algebra and geometry, everything. It, it, it allows you to learn algebra and geometry without paper notebook. You can draw uh, like all figures, all functions, um, solve variables and so on and so on. And it's relatively easy to use, but it's hard for a teacher to, uh, hard to convince the teacher that it's not hard. You can try it. You can you can have a very impactful change in in like couple of hours. Because uh, students, they are they are not afraid of computers. They can like do whatever you ask them to do. They can Google it. They can watch YouTube's. Uh, my daughter, like fourteen years old, it's now fourteen years old. But when she she was ten. She was searching for YouTube videos uh, for whichever drawing tool she had in her iPad, took lessons and draw something with layers, um, going back and forward in, in action stack and so on and so on. So new generation is not afraid of what uh, the teachers are afraid of. So <laughs> this is a challenge. They yeah. have to yeah. somehow simplify that. Uh, Sergey, we have uh, yeah four minutes less, and then I will suggest uh, all the next question. We can go out of this presentation uh, room and move uh, outside the carpet. Um, and and if the the the, the lobby, okay. the green carpet, the number E would be a good place to to go a little bit ahead. I have just one general question. That is my question now is uh, about the move. Um, the movement, did you see with this initiative became, as this initiative, this uh, platform became public, but more in terms of open edics, how visible we are in the open edics community, all of us, most of all of us. Uh, what does it mean, this project for the open edics community, in your opinion? Um, um... I am not sure if uh, um, that project uh, actually advertises open edX uh, to the Europeans that much as it advertises um, open edX to Ukrainian all sorts of ministries, government related entities and so on. Because uh, as soon as that um, all Ukrainian school online project was completed in tight deadlines, we were approached by the Ministry of um, um, Defense, the Ministry of uh, Internal Affairs, the Ministry of... I, I mean, it's like eight or something ministries were trying to uh, create something like that but for us <laughs> uh, uh, luckily ministry of digitalization is trying to orchestrate that process so uh, not all ministries are spending something on creating the very same maybe the platform will be reused maybe there will be some sort of like three platforms uh, like certification platform learning platform and whatever uh, certification platform for high stake exams. Uh, so yeah, open yeah. edX is well known uh, within Ukrainian government uh, officials. 
as a platform of choice for something about learning. And uh, it's not only learning um, uh, pupils, because uh, uh, there are ministries uh, which have, like, for example, that um, I don't recall how it's called, the, the ministry uh, which is uh, regulates uh, the government officials. Uh, so they had a list of uh, 300,000 uh, officials and they want them to be up to date with like whatever, 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 with uh, like policies on inclusion or green energy or whatever, or whatever, whatever. And they are looking for some sort of a way to 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 upskill them effectively yet um, so to say cheap and again open edX uh, is a platform of choice so most probably we will see uh, such platforms emerge but most probably after the war yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, to, to move to the outside the carpet. Uh, so let's go ahead. I think there are other questions. I also have other questions. I'm happy that most of the uh, um, users has been uh, all the time in. The recorded will be stopped now. Uh, see you outside in, as I said before, is the car, the green carpet number E. Let's meet there. Thank you very much, uh, Sergi, for this incredible story and good luck uh, for that. Yeah, thank you. See you on the carpet. E. carpet.